once again. This is DC Lesson 6, Part A, the series circuit, or putting components in series. So about this lesson, we're going to explain the series circuit, in which components in a circuit are connected one after the other after the other and so on. Therefore we say they are connected in a series. If you're working along listening to this video with a textbook, which is the way uh, I intend the lessons to work, you need a copy of um, Electrical Principles by Phillips, and it's section 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, that is the series circuit, current in the series circuit, and resistance in the series circuit that we're going to be dealing with in this little video clip. So 6.1, the series circuit, and here you can see the components are connected in series, are connected one after the other. There are only ever two connections per component, so we can't have any more than two, we can't have three or four. So let's just have a closer look. I shall um, turn the pen on, and here we have a, uh, what I would call a connection diagram. It's not an actual circuit, you probably wouldn't see an actual circuit that looks like that. So it's more like a connection diagram. In this particular case, we've got about three volts of batteries and we've got lamp one, lamp two, lamp three, and of course, lamp four. And from a circuit perspective, We've got the plus side of the power supply at three volts, being just two cells, one and a half volts each. And again, our lamp one, then connected in series is lamp two, and then connected in series with that is lamp three, and then connected in series with that again is lamp four. So the components are connected in series, one after the other, and there are only ever two connections. So just example, one, two, one, two, one, two, and even with our battery supplies, there's only two connections, one, two, it's the way it has to be in a series circuit. Only ever two connections per component, and they're all connected one after the other. So the big thing that I need you to get a hold of in this particular video clip is current in the series circuit. In a series circuit only has one path. There's only one possible path. And you can see here it's um, represented by our nice red arrow here. And remember we're using conventional current flow. So the current's flowing from the positive to the negative on the outside of the battery. So current is the same in all parts of the circuit. Because everything is in what we call series, if I was to measure the current here, it would be the same as if I measured the current here, or if I measured the current here, and if I was to measure the current here. It doesn't matter where I measure the current, it's going to measure the same value. We'll be doing a little um, skills practice exercise that demonstrates that. So current in a series circuit. So again here we have more a connection diagram than a circuit diagram and we've got resistor 1, resistor 2 and resistor 3. You can see our current path through the circuit and in this particular case we put in 3 ammeters and the current is reading 1.6 amps, sorry, 0.6 amps, 0.6 amps, and 0.6 amps. So it doesn't matter what our battery voltage is, whatever it happens to be, we have 0.6 of an amp flowing, so a series circuit has one path for the current, and the current is the same once the circuit has been energized. So 6.3, resistance in a series circuit. So this is a, another important aspect to understand that adding resistance in a series circuit 
increases the total circuit resistance. So you can see here on my uh, first diagram, and I'll just turn the pen on. So over here on our little lamp, it's got an element inside it, and that element has some resistance of some kind. In this particular case, our 1 volt or 1.5 volt cell is causing 1 amp of current to flow through the lamp. If I put two lamps in series, I'm effectively going to double the amount of current, sorry, double the amount of resistance, I should say, and halve the amount of current. So here, if I had a certain amount of resistance, and here some more resistance, basically my total resistance here is one half. The current, I should say, drops to one half. I'm looking at the current. The current drops to one half because the resistance, the R, goes up times two. Therefore, if the resistance goes up times two, the current has to go down by half. That's simple Ohm's law. So adding resistances in series increases the total circuit resistance and total circuit resistance increases, goes up. Therefore, our current I must come down. Of course, as long as V, the voltage stays the same. And in this particular case, the voltage from the battery will stay the same. So if we double the resistance, we halve the current. So the total resistance of a series circuit. The total resistance of a series circuit is the sum of the individual resistance values. So here's the formula I want the, this part here in red. RT, R total, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus R5, however many resistors you have in the circuit, you just add them all up. So simply RT is the total amount of resistance in a circuit in ohms, and R1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc are the individual resistance values. So it's a nice easy formula. In DC it's one of the easier formulas um, to remember for obvious reasons that the formula is additions in series, one after the other. The actual math looks like the way the circuit is connected. So if I had a circuit and it looked like this, I'm simply adding up R1 to R2 to R3. So the math, or the math mentally, mental model, it's what it is, because again the math is only a model that is representing what the physics is doing, actually looks like the physical connection between the components. So that's why it's easy to relate and remember and gain some meaning from. Remember that when we get meaning from what we're learning about, we've actually learnt it. So of course the circuit diagram looks very much like the modeling system. It actually helps bring meaning a little bit earlier and a little bit more easily to us. So here's a quick little worked example. There's nothing better than a, a nice example. R1, 120 ohms. R2, 330 ohms. And R3, 820 ohms. Our formula that we've already looked at, the R total is simply R1 plus R2 plus R3. So we simply say 120 plus 330 plus 820 if you're like me, I might be clever at maths, but I still like to get my calculator out. 
you plug the three numbers into the calculator, you'll get 1,270 ohms. So there is 1.27 K ohms of resistance in that circuit between terminals A and B. Here's a second example where we've actually got three lamps in series with each other and each of the lamps has the same resistance. So it's like putting three resistors of the same kind. So this one is 50 ohms. I'll just write 50R because it's a bit easier than the omega symbol. 50R and this is 50R as well. So R total is, we can just add them all up, R1234, or we can say the resistance of one multiplied by how many there are is the same thing. So it's that relationship between addition and multiplication. So in this particular case, three times 50 is 150, or 50 plus 50 plus 50 is 150, and we end up at the same place. So again, just putting resistors in series, you'll end up with a larger total resistance. Again, this is the nature of the physics, and this is the important part we need to learn. So Ohm's law to find current. To find the total resistance R total, then use the value in Ohm's law for the equivalent current. So the current equation. So in a series circuit, our R total is R total equals R1 plus R2 plus R3, total resistance. And because the current is the same in all parts of the circuit, this is how we express it. We say that the current I, and I'll just turn my pointer on, my pen on again. This is actually the I total. So the I total, even though it's the same everywhere, is equal to the same as the current through resistor one, is the same as the current through resistor two, is the same as the current through resistor three. So mathematically, we just say the I total is equal to the current in one one is equal to is equal to so it's just a mathematical way of saying the current's the same throughout the entire circuit so if i happen to know what the applied voltage is the voltage total and i know what the resistance total is i can simply use i equals v on r to work out the current where v is the applied voltage and also called V total. So sometimes when you hear the word applied voltage, we're meaning the complete supply voltage, and it's also called V total. So again, we can use Ohm's law, but we must be dealing with either the voltage total and the resistance total. And as you'll see, we can also deal with the individual resistors and their voltages to get that same current. So that brings us to the end of uh, lesson number six, part A. I hope you've learned a little bit about series circuits.